Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I'm going to take you through how to make your own Bokashi bran from rice wash. This is completely from scratch. Now this method is four steps. I'll go through them in detail in just a minute here, but I do have to make a comparison right off the front end here with making your own Bokashi bran from a starter liquid. So the difference between what I'm going to show you how to do and that is that with this, first of all, you save a lot of time. So the method I'm gonna show you starting it from rice wash actually takes between two and three weeks right on the front end isolating the lactobacillus bacteria that I'm gonna show you how to do. This you can substitute right in step number three for at the exact same volumes, volumes of the recipe so it'll save you that time. The other thing that people ask me right up front is though, isn't it any different? I mean, isn't the commercial proprietary uh, effective microorganisms mix different than what I'm getting from rice wash? And the answer is yes, probably, but you're gonna be hard pressed to actually quantify exactly in what ways. So typically they say that there are three microorganisms that they place into these starter mixes, lactobacillus, photosynthetic bacteria, and yeast but I was able to scratch up a certificate of analysis for this product here. And what it turns out is that the lactobacillus outnumbers the yeast and the photosynthetic bacteria by such an amount, either by a scale of a thousand or 10,000 times. So it really does uh, dominate the mix here. And my experience and the experience of other people who have used Bokashi from the rice wash formula has been that it works quite adequately. So. Uh, Really the only distinction I can tell you for sure that I can point out as a benefit is that this will save you time. So other than that, if you wanna use this, skip to step three. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna take you right to step one here, which starts with washing the rice. All right, here's everything I'm going to need, starting with two cups of water. Important in this step that this water is not chlorinated water. I get my water from a well, so that's not chlorinated. Otherwise you can just use distilled water or any other non-chlorinated water source. And one cup of rice. In this case, I'm just using sticky rice because that's what my daughters like to eat. And stir it around. And there's a lot of rice starch that just sits on the outside of the rice. And that's what we're trying to extract in this step. It's just that rice starch dust that you see making the water go cloudy. From there, the final step is to take this and pour it off into this mason jar. You don't have to get too worried about how much you're getting in this step. About half the jar is fine. You don't need a whole ton of this liquid to start the process. And finally, I'm just placing some cheesecloth across the top here. And I'm using cheesecloth because you actually want some amount of airflow in and out of the jar. After that, I just place this into a cupboard downstairs in a cool place and dark and wait for about a week. It's one week later now and I've taken this out of the cupboard and I'll uncover it here, but what I want you to see first is that there's a little film across the top there the top layer, and there's a little bit of sediment that settled to the bottom here, but it's the middle section that we're actually after. The rice starch in here is uh, presumed to have picked up lactobacillus bacteria by now, so I want to take out some of that, and now I'm going to mix it with milk to help it to develop even higher levels of lactobacillus. So I'm not going for the top, I'm not going for the bottom, I'm just going for a section in the middle here. And the turkey baster is like one ounce, roughly. And I'm after, oh, somewhere in the range of about two and a half ounces. Because that's how much my jar will hold when mixed with milk. 
Okay. Uh, maybe just a little more. Okay. So, probably have just a touch more than two and a half ounces here. This is the jar I'm going to put the new mix into. So I'll pour that over. Holding back just a little bit. And then I will use just regular milk. It can be any kind of milk. I think I saw one of the instructions say that it should be raw milk, but other instructions I see out there are that you can use any kind of milk. This is 2% skim milk. And after that, I'm just gonna cover it up. Now, this is, I'm assuming this has already been inoculated with the bacteria, so I don't need to just cover it with the cheesecloth again. I'm going for a real cover, except I'm not screwing it down. The reason is that as this mixture of milk and lactobacillus begins to ferment, it should actually let off some gases. And if I seal this up tight, it's quite possible that some pressure could build up in there. So I'm not looking for more air to get in, but I definitely want to see that some air can come out. So this step here I'm doing is after one week at this stage, this should take about two weeks. And back into the cupboard it goes. I'm ready for the third step here. It's been two weeks and this has fermented. It's divided into curves at the top from the milk and way down below. And this has a slightly yellowish color to it. What I also have on hand for this step is 10 pounds of wheat bran, 12 cups of warm non-chlorinated water, four tablespoons of molasses, then I have a turkey baster, a measuring cup, something to scoop with, and a black garbage bag. From the fermented mix, I'm just gonna use the turkey baster here. You could also just strain this off. And what I need is I need 60 milliliters of the whey, or four tablespoons. Next, I'm going to take my four tablespoons of molasses and dissolve that into the warm water. And incidentally, that's the only reason I have the water as slightly warm is so that it can dissolve this molasses quicker. The molasses is gonna act as further food for that lactobacillus once it's incorporated into the wheat bran mixture. So I'd like to get all of that to dissolve into the water. And then add the whey. And next I begin to pour off the liquid into the wheat bran. I'm holding back just a little because I want to make sure that this comes out to the right moisture level. All right, having mixed that around until there's no more dry patches, the moisture level I'm looking for is kind of like this. You can see that as I squeeze, it kind of forms a little ball, but it's easy to break apart. So that's quite moist enough. I don't need to add any more of that liquid to it, and it's well inoculated. And now to take that inoculated bran and just scoop it over fully into the garbage bag. 
The black garbage bag is gonna be the home of this brand for the next two weeks, while the lactobacillus continues to consume that molasses and multiply and fully inoculate the bran. And finally, in this step, you just have to push the air out of the bag and tie it off to do its fermentation step for two weeks. Okay, so this is the final step. This has been in the bag, the garbage bag, for two weeks. It's fermented. It has a pickled smell to it. There's no better way to describe it than that. It smells acidic and pickled. And that means it's full of that lactobacillus bacteria that's going to help to break down the food in the Bokashi system. I've poured it out onto this board here. You can use any surface so long as you can spread the Bokashi brand now thinly across the whole thing to help it to dry. It is, in fact, ready to use. So if you took some of it now and threw it into your Bokashi bucket, it would be, work just perfectly. But for future storage, you'll have to dry it out first and then put it into an airtight container like a pail with a lid on it or a rubber bait bin. All right, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions on this process or anything to do with the Bokashi composting type system, Drop that below the video, please.